Okay, at this particular point, we are ready to start disassembling the valve. Now the modifications we're going to be making to the valve, as well as opening up the transfer port and the barrel port, are what's really going to be leading to our increased velocities. First step, we want to remove and be careful. Don't want to uh, damage, the, but we want to remove this O-ring on the outside of the valve towards the cone-shaped pointed end. What I've got and what I've picked up at my local Ace Hardware is uh, this little, it's pretty much just like a dental pick. That works really well for O-ring removal. It's a pretty tight O-ring, pretty decent thickness, so it's not the easiest thing to get off. I initially was trying to use the end of a paper clip and was having problems getting it underneath there. The dental pick tool worked very well. But now we're ready to crack it open. And what's inside here is under pressure because there's a spring compressed. So we just want to break it loose to begin with. A lot of people are afraid of marking up the outside of this. It really doesn't serve any function. Um, Appearance-wise, it may yeah, affect the aluminum. But for all practical purposes, uh, that can be buffed out if the appearance is of a concern to you. Otherwise, as long as this fits, and the thing that really makes, makes it fit snugly in the tube is the O-ring we just removed. So we don't want to seriously gouge it up or nick it up, but as far as marking it slightly, it's not that big of a deal. Don't be too worried about that. I do use a rag and a couple of channel locks. That's too loose. Get yourself a good grip. Again, Marking it up, don't be too concerned about that. Get yourself a good grip and a nice twist. Let's see if I even got it loose. I did. So it didn't take much and I with the rag on there I really uh, there's a little bit of marking here but again I can buff that out. That Dremel tool with the buffing uh, uh, attachment will we'll get that out easily and that really isn't going to affect much of anything. Okay, So very carefully we're going to unscrew this. Keep inward pressure as I unscrew it so things don't go flying out. Forgot the light, sorry about that. Got an O-ring here inside this particular end. There is what is called a check valve.
It's got a beveled end to it. That's going to be facing the spring. The, sp the spring is what, uh, the idea of the valve spring is what is picked up inside uh, on this beveled end of the check valve. The other side is just a flat boss, so to speak. My description of how that check valve goes into the valve was completely backwards. I apologize. Um, the beveled end of the check valve actually faces the uh, cone-shaped uh, portion of the valve itself. The, the, the cone shape on the outside of the valve as far as in relation to the check valve, the beveled end on the check valve faces towards the uh, cone-shaped outside portion of the valve. The flat uh, boss section is what uh, faces the spring. The reason why I know this, after uh, originally making the explanation that I made, uh, I thought about it and I'm like, I really didn't notice I can't say 100% that I saw how that uh, came out of the valve. I checked the parts diagram. The parts diagram not only shows the check valve, but the way that it should face when it's assembled inside the valve. So it's just another example of how important printing up any parts diagram uh, that is available for a gun that you plan working on, it really is extremely valuable. But that's how I figured uh, that I was completely wrong. I apologize that faces inward as you put it back in. So you got the, the, the cone-shaped end of the valve, check valve that goes inside there, the valve spring, then you have the valve pin, which what um, has a, a, a Delrin pressed on fitting on the end, which I call a poppet. The key parts to this poppet really is this back face. That's what closes up and seals off air from the port side of the valve until this can be hit with the hammer and pushed in, of course that's going to return back with the spring, but until it, but prior to it being returned by the spring, when it's pushed in, that's going to open up and allow the air to come out of the port. Then it gets pushed back and seals up with the pressure of the spring on it. The th surface that does the sealing is this back face. So we're going to be doing some modifications to this front face, being very careful not to damage or nick up this back face. That's what we definitely don't want to do. We'll get back to those modifications in a little bit. The basic concept behind modding the valve and all of the individual parts that make up the valve assembly is to remove as much stuff, so to speak, and replace it with air. Now each piece that is a part of that valve assembly is going to have some type, some amount of material removed from it. That way, that space that is being taken up by material can now be replaced with air. Now, starting with the valve itself, that's going to involve the two individual halves of, of the valve house, uh, is what I will for, refer to it as. Um, the side with the with the cone shaped end to it, the opposite side of that half has male threads on it. Now, 
we don't need the amount of threads that is there. There's about six full threads that are a part of that male end. We're going to cut off half of those and leave only three. It's actually the, the face um, at the uh, end of the threads that gets uh, an o-ring put on it. That's actually that the o-ring itself and the surface it sits on is what's going to be doing the sealing against the other valve half. So removing three threads uh, is not going to harm anything. It is going to remove material that can now be uh, filled in with air rather than al aluminum. Uh, we'll be grinding out material on that particular half of the valve with the cone shape, uh, grinding out material uh, off of the inner diameter of that half of the valve, getting over to the other half of the valve, the one with the, with the uh, uh, output port on it, uh, we'll be removing material from uh, the inner diameter of that. Now that includes, that half has the female threads in it. And again, if you take a look at how deep those threads go, there is no reason to have that many threads. So uh, we'll be removing, uh, we'll be leaving about three full uh, female threads on that. Uh, the rest of the material uh, on the ID, we don't want to go too far and risk um, hitting the uh, surface of that half of the valve that um, that poppet seals against. But uh, we will be going down, uh, you know, fairly close to it, definitely stopping short with our, our grinding tool. But the amount of material I like to take off will pretty much remove uh, the major diameter of the, the, the threads, well, they're internal, so uh, you're going to almost have a, a smooth surface where those female threads used to be. Now, we, the threads that will be removed, we'll leave three full threads for engagement with the other half of uh, the valve with the male threads. But there's a lot of material that can come off, especially on that half of the valve without really uh, compromising the uh, integrity, the structural integrity of that half of the valve, okay? Now, the other parts, um, the check valve, what I like to do is the surface that faces the inside of the valve, the, the surface that faces the spring. We're going to drill a small hole, uh, remove some of that uh, check valve material, a, a small hole about halfway down, um, halfway of the overall length of the check valve. It's just going to create a small hole, remove material, and it's a very small amount of space that can now be filled in with air, but it is space that can be filled in with air. That's the whole point of uh, power modifications. Uh, the spring itself, the valve spring. It's extremely heavy. It doesn't have to be as heavy as the stock one. Uh, we want the valve to be opened up. We're going to be filling it with more air than would normally be in a stock valve. We want that uh, that uh, valve pin and pop it to be hit in, pushed in, and open up that transfer port area um, and dump all that air, that extra air that we're getting inside the valve, we want all that dumped out. So we need that hammer to force that in, that uh, valve pin in farther and for a longer amount of time to let all the air escape, take advantage of all that extra air that we're pumping into the valve. So we're going to replace the valve spring with a lighter spring, the main uh, uh, part of it being a lighter spring is it's going to be a thinner gauge wire, okay? Thinner gauge wire is less material. The, uh, 
material that's being taken up by the thicker gauge wire in the stock valve spring will be replaced again with air. These are minor things, but they all add up to velocity increases. Um, the other uh, part of the valve assembly that we have left is the pin with the poppet on the end. And we're going to remove some material from the poppet, being careful not to damage the face that seals. Um, we can remove some material off of the face uh, that uh, faces the spring. We can round off and remove material, put a nice curve on uh, the end of it. And then on the pin itself, we can remove uh, a small amount of material. What that is going to do is if we put it in the right spot on the pin, it's going to help the efficiency. Uh, hopefully that is, you know, when it gets pressed forward, um, the portion that's going to have some material removed off of the pin itself will be lined up or at the very least close to the, uh, the port area. Um, when there's less material in there, there's less plugging, the smoothness of the flow of the air out of the valve through, into that port and through that port will be helped by removing material from the pin. Now the pin doesn't take up any internal space inside the valve um, while it's being pumped with air and filled with air. It's just for the efficiency of the release of the air from the valve into the port, out uh, the outbound port. Okay, so that's a quick explanation, uh, just verbal. We'll get into it more specific as we do the individual modifications themselves but i thought it would be good to explain a little bit first what's going to be going on okay